So not that long ago, I was at a workshop where we were asked to think about the messages about money that had shaped us. And somewhat to my surprise, this is what popped into my head. <laughs> this is Barbara Streisand as Dolly Levi in the film version of the musical Hello, Dolly. And she quotes this beautiful line of her late husband, Ephraim Levi, money, if you pardon the expression, is like manure. It's not worth a thing unless it's spread around, encouraging young things to grow. <laughs> Dolly's foil in the musical is Horace Vandergelder, the wealthy but incredibly stingy Yonkers merchant who feels like everyone is always taking his money. What I love about Dolly's line and her attitude about giving is that she really captures the excitement around giving, the possibility, the very real impact that each of us can have on the world with the money that we are able to give away. But I think that the tension between Dolly and Horace is really actually emblematic of a lot of the tension that people feel around charitable giving. That a lot of our experiences, maybe too many of our experiences, feel like taking instead of giving. Too many of our experiences are reactive, where we feel like we're just constantly responding to requests from friends over email, in our mailboxes. And this can lead us to feel very disempowered, like we're in this passive, reactive position. And that leads to the kind of frustration and annoyance that Horace feels. So this is not a good thing. And it will not surprise you to learn that Jewish tradition is very much on Dali's side. There are so many conversations about giving in Jewish texts. And one of the most important things that we learn about giving from Maimonides and elsewhere is that it's important to give with a positive attitude. So the great medieval scholar Maimonides, the Rambam, created what is now a very well-known ladder of Jewish philanthropy, ladder of tzedakah. And the bottom most rung, the worst way to give, is to give unwillingly. There are other sources in the Talmud and elsewhere that say that it would be better not to give at all rather than to give begrudgingly. Because to give begrudgingly shames the recipient and it denigrates the mitzvah, the obligation to give, and it even shames God, who we learn, stands beside the person who is asking you for money. So how do we go from being like Horace to being like Dolly? How do we become empowered givers? Well, I think part of the problem is that we skipped a step. This conversation about how I respond to requests for funding from organizations, requests for charitable donations, this is the second step. And the first step, the proactive step that we so often skip is the one where we ask ourselves, who am I as a giver? What are my values? What are the things that I'm interested in? What's the change that I want to make in the world? That kind of strategic thinking is what we in the professional philanthropy business call strategic philanthropy. And that's the way that most professional foundations operate. When somebody starts a new foundation, the board, the funders come together and they say, who are we? What do we care about? What are our values? What's our mission? And what's the change that we want to make in the world? And then they think about the strategies for making those change, the organizations who can be the best partners on the ground. But I think this is something that we all deserve to have. This experience of empowered philanthropy, not only do we deserve it, but the world really needs for more of us to feel good about our charitable giving. We all deserve the opportunity to become producers of our own philanthropic experiences, experiences that are resonant and meaningful and even joyous. So how do you do that if you can't start your own foundation? Well, I'll tell you what I did, what a lot of people are doing, and what I encourage you to do as well. I joined a giving circle. So a giving circle is just a group of people who come together, pool their charitable resources, and decide together where to give them away. It's sort of like a mutual fund, but where the investors get to make all the investment decisions. Or it's like a book group, where instead of drinking wine and talking about books, you hopefully still drink wine, and you talk about or the organizations, the causes that are most important to you. The key thing is that everyone contributes and everyone decides. Beyond that, giving circles are infinitely customizable. 
any group of people with any amount of money interested in any issue can come together to start a giving circle. And research has shown that this model is incredibly powerful for givers, for members of giving circles. That members of giving circles give more, give more strategically, and are more involved in their communities. About 11 years ago, my husband and I joined a giving circle. It's called Natan, it's here in New York City, and it funds Jewish and Israeli social innovation. We joined Natan not because we had heard of giving circles before, but because a friend asked us to, and that's in fact the way that most people come to this kind of experience. Being in Natan has transformed our experience of giving. Where our giving used to be episodic and reactive, it's now much more organized and intentional. We give more than we used to, but we also feel more confident in our giving. About a year after we joined Natan, I left at the opportunity to become Natan's executive director, and I've been there ever since. It's almost 10 years now. And in that time, through my experiences with Natan and with so many members of other giving circles that I've talked to in the Jewish world, outside the Jewish world, it's become abundantly clear to me that giving circles are an extraordinarily powerful model for bringing people into this kind of empowered relationship with giving. So over the past year, dozens of partners have joined together around the world to create a new movement of Jewish giving circles. We call it Amplifier, the Jewish Giving Circle Movement. And it's a network of giving circles inspired by Jewish values that makes it as simple as possible for anyone, even you, to start a giving circle and then to strengthen and sustain it over time. What I've come to see through experiencing now many more giving circles than I ever thought possible, talking to them as they start up and working with them on strengthening their work over time, is that the reasons that my husband and I joined Natan so many years ago are the same reasons why so many people join giving circles. There are a million of those reasons. Let me just give you the top three. So the first is that giving circles turn talk into action. This is the famous Jewish scholar Confucius. <laughs> Not Jewish, very smart, spot on. When I read Natan grant applications every year, I learn something new. I learn about a new place in the world that Jews live, or a new issue that's facing their communities, or I add another layer of complexity to my understanding of the incredibly complicated place that is the state of Israel. And I don't just learn about it, I actually do something about it. We give. We engage with organizations, we visit them, we talk to their participants. Every year, we evolve and we grow through this hands-on experience of giving together. The second thing that makes giving circles so appealing to people is perhaps more appealing than ever, given how wired and connected we all are. And that's that giving circles offer the kind of transparency and control that we are used to having in all aspects of our lives today, including in our giving. <laughs> the good news here is that it is now easier than ever to connect with great organizations around the world. But the technology alone, this technology that I'm surprised actually right now not to find in my hand, this technology that conditions us to, to want transparency and control in our giving is not enough. It can't create intentional, meaningful experiences of giving on its own. But a giving circle can. So many people, when they first come to Natan, or when I go to talk to them as they're starting up a new giving circle, so many people talk about the frustration of not knowing where their charitable dollars are going when they give them, and not having any kind of control over where they go. In a giving circle, you first have total transparency into where your money goes within the circle, and then you have control into where it goes when you give it away. And depending on the level of engagement that you have with the organizations that you fund, you can even have a great deal of transparency into, where it, into how it's used by the organizations that you give it to. So finally, and perhaps most important, giving circles are so powerful because of the community aspect. Being part of a giving circle amplifies the impact that each of us can have as individual givers 
and being part of a community of people who are united by their desire to give is an incredibly meaningful experience that is actually much more fun as well than giving on your own. There is so much amplification of impact that goes on in a giving circle. First, the financial leverage. For your $100 contribution, now you're responsible for giving away $1,000. Your $10,000 contribution now turns into your responsibility for giving away $100,000 or $200,000. There's an intellectual leverage that happens as well. When we first joined Natan, I was working at another Jewish foundation, so technically I was the expert in the room. But I found my mind being changed all the time by the, com by the questions and the comments and the perspectives of the other people around the table, people whose day jobs were in business or investing or law. Together, we made such better decisions than any of us would have on our own. So Jewish tradition also has a great deal to say about the power of community. And I think that one of the best analogies in Jewish institutions to the giving circle is a minion. A minion is a group of at least 10 people who come together to pray. And literally, there are prayers that we cannot say if we don't have a minion, and experiences like reading the Torah that we can't have if we are alone. This idea of the minion unlocking ideas and unlocking experiences is extremely powerful. So powerful that we even read in the Talmud and elsewhere that when a minion comes together to pray, an aspect of the divine presence comes to be with them. And that God hears the voice of a minion differently than the voice of individual prayers. So if you'll allow me to go from that spiritual place to a little bit more of a mundane place, giving circles too. Being part of a giving circle unlocks ideas and experiences that you wouldn't have if you were giving on your own. And the voice of the giving circle is heard differently in the community. The collective voice is unique and distinct and different. When I say that Natan has made a grant, it's heard very differently by the recipients and by the rest of the community than if I were to say that the individual members of Natan had made contributions. So there are many different giving circles in the world. The beauty of this model is that there is room for infinitely more. And I actually think you should start a giving circle. <laughs> the barriers to entry are almost nil. And now that we have Amplifier, there is a whole community of people who will be invested in your success. Giving circles are a way for all of us to become the kind of empowered, proactive givers that the world so desperately needs. They're a way for all of us to meaningfully, even joyfully, participate in the holy work of spreading our money around, encouraging things to grow. Thank you. Thanks for watching Eli Talks. Click through or subscribe to the Eli Talks channel for more inspired Jewish ideas.